So right. it's take three. How did you get to go to Vietnam? Well, I first went to Vietnam in 1964, one year before the American troop built up there. When they came in 1965, it quickly became the biggest story in Asia and one of the biggest in the world. So that was the place to be and that was the place largely I remained for the next 10 years until the war ended in Indochina in 1975. Uh, I was working for an international television news agency, an Australian but not specifically for Australia. I worked as a cameraman correspondent which meant that I did my own filming and wrote my own scripts, my own narration for the film. It was distributed very widely, East and West Europe, every television station on the African continent, North and South America, including the United States, and of course all over Asia, from Japan to Indonesia and Australia and New Zealand. Okay. Okay, Mr. Kim. Ready. This is uh, take four. I was an Australian working for an international television news agency. I worked alone as a cameraman correspondent. That meant I took my own film and wrote the script, the narration for that film. The film coverages, the news film, was distributed widely all over the world, not only Australia but to Europe, East and West Europe, Communist Eastern Europe took the film as well. Every television station on the African continent, North and South America, including the United States, and of course all of Asia, from Japan to Hong Kong, Indonesia, and New Zealand and Australia. So you stayed there for how long? Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Yeah. Running. This is take four. When you, when you first arrived in Vietnam, what did you physically have with you? Well, I had just one personal bag when I first arrived in Vietnam and a small camera. I was prepared to cover the war. That's the reason I was there. What I didn't know was is how I would react to combat. I had no idea at all what my reaction was. I was very apprehensive. When you say you were ready, would you, would you say that you were ready for a combat zone? Nobody is ready for a combat zone except a trained soldier, and I wasn't a trained soldier. I had done some national service training, but that hadn't prepared me for real live combat. So when you first went out into the field on the operation that you were going to make contact with the enemy more than likely, how were you feeling or what was your... I was, I was very nervous, I was very apprehensive. I can't say I was afraid, because rightly or wrongly, I had confidence in the people I was with, and they were South Vietnamese forces. The Americans weren't there at that time. It came as quite a surprise, but combat was much as I had envisaged it. Television had done a fairly remarkable job, you know, they'd prepared me in that way. The sounds, were very faithfully reproduced in real life, um, just as I had imagined and just as they had been reproduced in war, war films, that is. Uh, so I remember there was one uh, very popular television series about that time called Combat, in fact. It was pretty good because it uh, did give a sense of what happens. In terms of the reality of war, though, did that really work out that way? Was it just like it was on television? What was missing was all the rather boring time and very fatiguing time before you got to the combat. You couldn't expect to be in combat more than five or ten percent of the time you're in the field. Uh, often it took two or three days before the enemy were sought out and engaged, or vice versa, the enemy decided to seek you out and engaged your forces, your side of the coin. Sometimes you'd go out four or five days, walk through waterlogged paddy fields, across mountains, and nothing at all. 
very boring, but interesting because you're seeing a new countryside. If you're a bushwalker and a hiker, that was fine. It was pretty tiring, but rather boring. That was the difference. There were many, many long hours. And then when the combat came, very often because it was the enemy who initiated the combat, he took advantage of the tiredness, the fatigue of the uh, South Vietnamese forces, as well he should. Also, that meant I was very fatigued. When, when I was first in combat, it was late in the afternoon, and I remember being very tired, and I remember thinking, my God, I just, I really don't want it. At this stage, I'm too tired. Why don't I do it when I'm fresh and in, in the morning? But that's not the way it happens. What exactly happened, or what, were you, what was your reaction? I was quite surprised when the first cow went overhead, just like television. I couldn't believe it. But there's nothing I could do. I was in an open field up to my waist in water. So were the soldiers. And I slogged on with them. Fortunately, the opposition wasn't too strong, and we won that battle. I don't know what we'd have done if we'd have lost. I would have died in my first engagement in a waterlogged paddy field, I suppose. But we did win. I will remember, I think, eight Viet Cong soldiers were killed. And we captured a Viet Cong flag. It was all pretty standard stuff. And the captain I was with, a Vietnamese army captain, became one of my best friends. It wasn't until three years later that he confidentially told me that at last I understood how to take care of myself in combat. That was after three years. So you were pretty green when you first went in? Oh, I was very, I was very green. I don't know how I survived, really. Some would say luck. Uh, I guess there was a certain amount of luck. But it was also is that very sensibly I did what the soldiers did. If they went down, I went down. If they ran forward or back, I went with them. Don't try and do it alone because you don't know near as much as the soldiers do. And they were very experienced. They'd had to look after themselves for quite a number of years at that time. Did you really expect to spend 11 years when you first went there? Oh, I didn't expect to spend more than two or three years. What I didn't expect was that I would become very close to the people, very close to the land, and I loved both, not only in Vietnam, but in Cambodia also, where I spent a lot of time later. That was what I was unprepared for. Uh, I thought I would spend two or three years and then go on to wider pastures to Europe or South America or Africa or somewhere. I really didn't want to after two or three years. I wanted to stay in Asia, and that's what I did.